chance. What again, Mr. Rawson? I'm sorry to hear that. I can get over today. Goodbye. As the milk officer, a great deal of my time is spent visiting farmers and giving what help and advice I can. It seemed that Mr. Rawson had had a churn of milk rejected by the creamery, and it wasn't the first time. Luckily, his farm isn't far from headquarters. Of course, I can't rush out every time I get a phone call, but I'd had an appointment cancelled, so I could fit in a visit that day. Rawson's land is near the river, low-lying. It gets pretty muddy in winter. His buildings are old, and he doesn't waste much time on what he calls unessential. I've seldom known a bunkier approach drive. I usually put on a white coat to go around farms. It's a ministry recommendation, and a good one. From an artist's point of view, you might call Long End Farm attractive. But from a farming point of view, I'd sooner see some more practical, modern buildings. Oh, good morning. It's good of you to come so quickly. Well, I'd like to get down at once when I'm able, if there's any trouble. Well, what's it going to do? Oh, you never can tell. I think there's a bit of thunder about. Mr. Rawson was pretty upset about the rejected churn. He seemed to think they were picking on him. So I explained the routine of testing at the creamery. The platform examiner, Snifter he's usually called, checks each churn as it comes in. If he gets one he suspects from the smell, he sets it aside. And as soon as possible, a laboratory assistant comes to take samples. He uses a sterilized dipper so that no contamination can come from outside. The routine of sample taking is standard and very thorough. Two test tubes are filled. One for the test. And the other to act as a control. The name of the farm is noted on the Churton label and on the laboratory checking chart. Now the two samples are taken to the laboratory. A chemical called resazurin is used for this test. It must be kept in a refrigerator. It has the property of changing color in ratio with the amount of souring bacteria present in the milk. pipette for measuring the resazurin is flame dried before the chemical is injected into one of the milk samples. Now this sample is placed in a water bath to speed up the growth of the bacteria present. The time and temperature of incubation is very carefully controlled. After 10 minutes the test sample is removed from the bath. It is placed in a comparator with the control sample and the colors compared. The test confirmed that the milk had too high a content of milk souring bacteria. This fact was noted on the check sheet. Well, and that's what happened to your milk this morning. It failed the resazurin test. Why should it go off so quickly? Well, the immediate cause is the presence of milk souring organisms. But this may be due to a number of things. More often than not, using milk equipment that hasn't been properly cleaned. Perhaps we could look round. Yes, yes, of course. The actual equipment was quite good. The two compartment washing trough was reasonably clean, but the buildings and siting left a lot to be desired. That tiny window would hardly give enough light for the operator to see what he was doing. I noticed that there was a steam sterilizing cabinet. Mr. Rawson used it to store his equipment, and I wasn't happy about the way some of this had been left. 
The water around here is very hard, and the combination of steam and hard water produced a quantity of fur in the milking bucket. In itself, the fur, the sort of thing you see in kettles, is harmless, but it tends to retain stale milk and makes a breeding ground for bacteria which can infect the next milking. It was obvious that the age of the buildings was making things difficult for the farmer. Looking round, I couldn't help comparing Long End with a farm I'd seen a few days before. The dairy at Horndean Farm is new. It was built only a couple of years ago. The lorry path to the churn loading ramp has been well concreted, pretty essential in our climate. Inside the layout is well planned too. The cow shed leads off the washroom. Here, smooth walls and light colour make the place easy to clean and pleasant to work in. The equipment is similar to Mr. Rawson's, the same type of two-compartment trough with, of course, hot and cold water, but it's much better sighted. Light from a big window in daytime and artificial light right overhead. They now use chemical sterilisation on this farm, but they had kept the steam chest. It made a good storing place for the equipment. As we walked from Mr. Rawson's washroom across the yard to his cow house, the contrast became even more apparent. An old-fashioned cow house like this would need a great deal of adapting before it fitted in with modern methods. Under conditions like these, you have to work twice as hard to get the same result. For example, that deep, narrow gutter must make mucking out difficult. And because the cow stalls are so near, the old wall gets splashed and it's difficult to clean. Lack of concrete in the yard and the approach from the pastures means that in winter the cows tend to arrive for milking covered in mud. As I said to Mr. Rawson, washing the cows before milking must be quite a job. And because there are no washing facilities for the cowman near the cowhouse, with the best will in the world, cleanliness must suffer. Oh, I agree, the old place isn't ideal. I'm thinking of going in for a TT license and altering the building. Might put in a parlor. What do you think? Well, there's a lot to be said for parlors. They save labor. And once the cows get used to them, they work very well. Of course, you intend yarding the cows, you'll need a lot of litter. I saw an interesting setup the other day. The buildings at Shortacre are new and designed for the job. They have about 45 head of cattle, yarded in winter, but in summer they're brought in from the pasture at milking time to the collecting yard outside the parlour. In line with modern practice, they're confined in a small space so that there should be no waste of time when the cows are let into the parlour for milking. Once milked, each cow moves into the other half of the collecting yard. I noticed that the steps used by the cows have been specially designed with long treads to make them more comfortable for the beasts. Inside, the layout is designed to save labour and fatigue for the cowmen. The doors are controlled from the central pit where the cowman works with the cows on both sides of him. Since the animals are on a higher level, stooping is avoided when washing the udders and fitting the milking clusters. I was interested in the cooling arrangements of the in-churn milking system. Chilled water operates on an internal revolving paddle and flows over the outside of the churn. It is collected in a circular drain and returned to the refrigerating plant for re-chilling and back over the churn. Cooling's pretty important. What system do you use? Nothing as elaborate as that, I'm afraid. After we put the milk in the churns, we run the cold water into the trough. Well, it's pretty rough and ready, and tap water isn't always cool enough. There are other methods of cooling. For example, surface cooling, where the milk flows over a metal area cooled by chilled water, or in-can cooling. Here the churn stands on a grill over the refrigerator plant. Chilled water runs over the outside as well as through revolving paddles inside. Then there's another system, which is perhaps the coming thing, the bulk tank. It's a method for storing and cooling. Chilled water in an enclosed jacket circulates all around the stainless steel tank. Inside, paddles keep the milk in motion and in contact with the chilled sides of the tank. Collection by the creamery is by tanker lorry. It's initially expensive, but a first-class method. Mind you, there's not much point in going to a lot of trouble to cool milk and then doing what I saw on my way here this morning. Leaving churns for collection in full sun can undo all the good of cooling. Ah, not guilty. 
and I can stand as a shelter built over it, as I've no trace to keep the sun off. But going back to the parlor system, the one you told me about. The tandem one? Yes. Is that the best layout for me? Well, you know, you can't just say that any particular system's the best. It all depends on each farmer's individual circumstances. There are other types of parlor. There's the abreast type, a fairly common installation. The L shape. This, like the tandem, puts the cows on a higher level to avoid stooping by the operator. The tool level, again, the cows are higher than the cowmen, but since they must step up from the floor, all stooping is not avoided. The herring bone, a very quick system to operate. There are no doors to the cow standings, and the cows are handled in batches. There's the movable bale originally designed to take out to cattle on pasture. Some farmers have made this a permanent fixture on their farm by putting it on a concrete base. The inside is simple and in keeping with the economy for which the bale is designed. All these types of building vary considerably in price and a decision to use either one or other of them can only be made after going into the relative questions of price, siting and general convenience. But with any milking system, the routine of cleaning and sterilizing is of paramount importance. For example, in the milking parlor, the teacup clusters are cleaned on the spot. After each milking, they are first scrubbed in cold, clean water to remove the dung from the outside. Then fresh cold water is surged through the system by means of the vacuum. This is to remove the milk left behind in the plant. Next, the clusters must be given a thorough scrubbing in a hot detergent wash. Care should be taken to clean the inside of the teat cups with a suitable brush. After scrubbing, about three gallons of hot detergent is drawn through each cluster. This must be followed by a further rinse in fresh, clean water. For final sterilizing, the tap to the steam raising plant is turned on and steam allowed to circulate for at least two minutes at 205 degrees Fahrenheit through the entire system. This should be done once every day. In any milking system, the washroom is an important place. In many farms these days, you'll see this type of rubber bin indicating that immersion cleaning is used. As with all cleaning methods, the first procedure is thorough rinsing of the equipment in clean water. But now, in place of the detergent wash, the equipment is packed in a special container which will be immersed in a caustic soda solution until the next milking. The caustic soda acts as a cleansing agent throughout the storage time. Incidentally, since caustic soda is harmful to most other metals, stainless steel must be used for all metal parts. Immersion cleaning is a good labor-saving way of cleansing and storing milk equipment. What do you think? Was it the way that we washed the equipment that made the milk go off? Yes, I think it was. The state of your equipment isn't all it should be, you know. Of course, a place like this is very difficult to work in. If only you could get a layout like the one I saw the other day. Hilltop is an old farm, but they've a good modern cow shed. A wide central gangway makes for easier mucking out, and the cement rendered walls and feeding troughs of the head to wall standings are easy to keep clean. They use bucket-type milking here. As in all milking systems, the first operation, and a very important one, is thorough cleaning from mud. Next comes the rejection of the fore milk onto the strip cup. 
This should always be done to detect any clotting or blood in the milk. Only after these preliminaries are efficiently carried out should the milk bucket be attached to the vacuum line, the cluster put on, and the milking started. When it's drawn from the cow, the milk is collected at a churn centrally placed in the cow shed. And from here, it's only a step to the washroom. Now, this is where I think the solution of your problem lies, Mr. Rawson. Really thorough washing and sterilization of the milking equipment. At Hilltop Farm, they use chemical sterilization, probably the most generally used cleansing method in dairy farming today. First, the vacuum is used. This is to surge clean water through the pipes and clusters. The object is to remove milk residues which, when they go stale, can cause contamination at the next milking. Now in the first rinsing water, a thorough brushing removes any remaining milk from the equipment. A special brush will be used on the insides of the clusters. and the outside surfaces of all equipment must be well scrubbed too. When the first rinse is finished, the equipment is moved to the second compartment of the trough, which is filled with a hot detergent chlorine wash. The first rinse is now run out. This is important as the final rinse must not be done in contaminated water. Clean, fresh water should be run into the trough while the hot detergent chlorine wash is being carried out. This scrubbing of all the equipment in hot detergent must not be skimped. It not only removes the last traces of milk residues, but also the chemical kills the organisms which can cause milk souring. Only when each piece of equipment has been thoroughly brushed should hypochlorite be added to the freshly run rinse. and the equipment moved for the final wash. This is to remove all traces of the detergent. All that remains is for the equipment to be hung up in a clean place until the next milking. Now, that's the sort of procedure you ought to follow, Mr. Rawson. Well, thank you, Mr. Haywood. You have certainly given me something to think about. It's obvious I shall have to make some sort of a change. Well, you think it over, Mr. Rawson. I'll give you all the help and advice I can, but only you can decide what system to have. I'm sure you'll hit on the right solution, if only you remember the underlying principles. Good buildings, easy to keep clean, whether they be cow sheds or milking parlours. Remember the washroom is just as important as the cow shed, and that some sort of effective cooling system is essential. And that the milk should be kept cool right up to the time the churn leaves the farm. Lastly, Remember that unless the equipment is rinsed thoroughly immediately after milking and well washed and sterilized, there will inevitably be trouble with the keeping quality of the milk. Bye. Don't forget, if you want any help or advice, get in touch with me. That's what I'm here for.